welcome back to UCN Live to another edition of Ten Count. We're here in the city of Santa Monica at Hollywood Smoke. I'm joined by Michael Montero and Doug Fisher. And boys, we got a lot of stuff on Showtime coming up. Let's take a look at the schedule. December 10th from the Galen Center at USC, Jamal Charlo takes on Julian Williams. Abner Morris takes on Jesus Cuellar. Then January 14th, 168-pound unification. Badu Jack takes on James DeGale. Then January 28th, doubleheader, the rematch between Frampton and Santa Cruz. And then Mikey Garcia challenges Dejan Zlatikinen for the WBC 135-pound title. Then March 4th, Danny Garcia in a showdown against Keith Thurman. Doug, out of all those fights I listed, what are your favorite fights? What's the one that you highlight and say that's must watch? That's a that's a tough question. There's no weak links. It's a good schedule. Yeah, that's a very strong schedule. End of the year, beginning of the year schedule for Showtime, and kudos to them to, and you know, f for their role in putting that together. Um, I'm looking forward to the welterweight showdown. You know, Keith Thurman uh, versus Danny Garcia. I think it kind of brings us closer to recognizing who the best American welterweight is. Um, I'm looking forward to the super middleweight showdown between uh, Jack and DeGale because um, it's for the Ring Magazine's uh, vacant super middleweight championship and our, our number one and number two ranked fighters. And I think it's uh, an, an interesting style matchup. I think um, DeGale's got a lot of bravado. He's, he's, he's talented, he's, a, he's athletic, very confident. And uh, Badu Jack is steadily improving and just solid all around and he doesn't lack for, for confidence. He's not as vocal about it as, as the, the British fighter is, but I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna deliver. I, I, I like that fight because both guys are, are in their prime and you can say the same thing about uh, Thurman and uh, Danny Garcia, although I don't know how well that will actually play out in the ring. Right, and one note, that might end up on CBS. The Thurman Garcia fight, yes, right, I have heard that. According to Stephen Espinosa. But it would be one of those things where it's a, it's Showtime, yeah. it's Showtime's production and, and broadcasters on CBS, yeah. Mike, and, and that's great. What stands out to you? I like the Frampton-Santa Cruz rematch, so and, and I like the fact that it's in Vegas. I think uh, the first time around in New York, it felt like it was Ireland. It may as well have been over in the UK. I think this time in Vegas, you're going to have Mexican-American fans from Los Angeles make the trip. It's going to be uh, just a great electric atmosphere. You're going to have the UK contingency and the Mexican-American contingency. And those two, style-wise, they can't be in a bad fight together. I think it's going to be another good one. Yeah, do, you think, what, do you think Santa Cruz can do anything different to change uh, the outcome of the first fight? You know, he had moments where he got a little more solid and stiff with the jab, um, but probably not. I still favor uh, Frampton, but again, just because of his length and his punch volume, I think it's going to make for an exciting fight. I'll make a prediction. When Leo Santa Cruz walks out to the MGM Grand Arena and he's expecting East L.A. and it looks like Belfast again, because <laughs> I'm telling you, the Frampton has yeah. a size. I'm not yeah. saying it's Ricky Hatton, but he has a sizable contingent. And they love, the boxing fans over there love coming to Vegas. It won't be quite the home canvas advantage he enjoyed back this summer. But I still think he is the lion's share favorite in terms of the crowd. I also really like this card. This is the one I'm looking forward to the most, January 28th. Because I think Mikey Garcia, he is not dipping his toe back into the water. He is diving right in with the rough customer, Dejan Zatikinen. Guys, I think that's a real fight, real test there for Mikey. Yeah, listen, the, the lightweight division is very deep and very hot, and there's uh, a lot of great matchups that can be made at 135 pounds, and this is one of them. And the winner of this fight is a, a top three or four lightweight, and um, he has options. But I like it just style-wise because Latikanen comes right at you. He's got some technique but he's one of these short, stocky guys who understands that he's got to get in a guy's grill, he's got to outwork you, he's got to beat you up, and he's smart about it, and we all know that Mikey Garcia is smart, but he's the bigger, stronger, even though he's coming up in weight, he's the naturally bigger guy, and he's the counterpuncher with real power. So Zlatikin in style kind of plays right into those heavy hands. When you look at this schedule top to bottom, I don't see a weak spot, as you said, Doug. I think Steven Espinoza needs to be lauded. I think they've put together a very, very good ledger. PBC, a couple of days after this, came out with their own announcement that they're going to go through 50-plus more dates on the various platforms, CBS, uh, ESPN, Fox. 
if you're Steven Espinoza, you have to have that, what, Cheshire cat grin? Uh, because he's got the lion's share of the good fights. I'm just wondering, if you're one of these other networks, are you saying to yourself, okay, uh, are there any good fights remaining that we can have? I just wonder about the overall quality, top to bottom. If you're Showtime, you got all the first round draft choices here. What's well, left for everyone else? They're paying for it. Yeah. Showtime's that's true. paying, so you get what you pay for. The other networks, you know, I think at this point, they're, they're more concerned about getting paid. They're still getting their money. Uh, there's 200 fighters under that umbrella. So even if it's prospects being built up, Al, Al Heyman doesn't like to match his prospects in tough, but if he started to do that with some of these uh, open dates you're talking about, I think there could be some good fights in there, but it's probably going to be more of the same, the, yeah, the maybe, one-sided matchup. Maybe, maybe one of the networks gets to keep, uh, you know, guys like Errol Spence or Deontay Wilder. I was going to say Deontay uh, Wilder. Or even some of the retreads who still have a name like Andre Berto. I don't know. Yeah, and Vonis. Vonis is looking for a fight on Twitter. <laughs> That's what By I heard. Way, Vonis, what happened to your tweets? They just suddenly disappeared <laughs> yeah. into the Bermuda Triangle. And you're right, you bring up Errol Spence. That's the point I wanted to make. I think he is one of their true blue chippers. I think this kid has a shot to go all the way, to be more than just a champion. A guy that could be something in terms of a draw. He's marketable, very good talent. You're telling me he's not part of the first rollout? Like, where is he? Where, where's Errol Spence? Let me ask plans? you this. Um, if you were in charge of Spence's career, how would, what platform would you want to, to move him on? Show, would you want, want him to go on Showtime? Or would you want to keep him on the various PBC network, networks because of more exposure? Network TV on that Thurman Garcia undercard. He should be the co-feature. Yeah, if that goes to CBS, that's going to do a big rating. Groom him as a challenger exactly. or a potential oh, yeah, of opponent. Course. And also, I think one of the things that they failed to do consistently, I think there's a market for Errol Spence in the Dallas Metroplex area. Boxing has been successful if you build up attractions in the Lone Star State. We were there a couple of months ago. Now, Canelo's a different animal. But Errol Spence was there a couple of months ago, yes, too, was, taking it all in. Like, enjoying, wow, this is, what a, this is what a huge event looks yeah, like. And I, with his talent, and he's a nice kid, telegenic, there's a kid that I'm like, wow, why aren't they riding this horse? But Danny Garcia uh, was fighting this week as we tape. He has not fought in Philadelphia in six years. And Philadelphia, last I checked, had a bit of a fighting history. <laughs> Say what you want about Danny Garcia. He's an accomplished fighter. They just do things. And again, people say that, quote, unquote, Hating, we're pointing out facts that I think Errol Spence is one of these kids that on one of these platforms, he should be one of these guys you ride consistently and you build. But as for Showtime, right now, the onus is on Peter Nelson. I think HBO needs to come out with something. I'm sorry, I, I know he's trying his best, but Malik Scott, Louis Ortiz, uh, I, I'm just glad Westworld is very good on HBO. It is. Or, or Insecure. Because right now, from a boxing perspective, if you're solely getting HBO for the boxing, are, are you getting your money's worth, guys? No, you're no. not. And there was potential for some fights to happen. We thought that we were going to see Canelo at the end of November. He got hurt. We thought we were going to see Golovkin on uh, December 10th. And some of these fights fell through. There was a possibility of a Klitschko-Joshua fight, supposedly. Mm, Bolivian. Right. So there, there was potential there. But it just seems that the can has been kicked down the road to 2017. Will some of those fights happen next year? If so, that will help HBO rebound. But right now, it's checkmate. And I, I think that Showtime is just playing them, just beating them at chess right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I think for HBO to catch up to Showtime, they need to schedule fights with both Canelo and Triple G in the first quarter of Off 2017. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's the plan. Right, and by the way, those sirens you just heard was the paramedics trying to resuscitate HBO's boxing <laughs> program. All right, well, that's it for this edition of 10 Count on behalf of Doug Fisher and Michael Montero. This is Steve Kim saying goodbye, everybody. Hey.